First, we need to reposition the franchise. Uh, second to that, we need to replenish the franchise after 11 years of um, you know, not ever being able to do that because we were in such a pursuit for uh, maintaining a, a team that could that could get to the postseason and contend in the postseason year after year after year. Yeah, Sam Presti speaking to the media yesterday about the changes to the team and the future of the Thunder. And this morning we're joined live in studio by our own Carson Cunningham, Mark Rogers, host of WWLS's Monsters of the Midday, and then Alex Roig, who has the Thunder podcast. Let me shake your hand. I don't get to see oh, you that hello. often. Oh, hello. Good morning. So I'm going to shake your hand because <laughs> right. I just don't get to see you. And Alex, all the way down there, thanks for being here. Okay, let's start here. What did you think of the press conference yesterday? Oh, I thought it was necessary. I thought it kind of echoed his op-ed piece that he wrote in the Oklahoman. And um, I think he's kind of preparing Thunder fans, season ticket holders, for what's to come. And that is, it's going to get bad before it gets good. Yeah. And I think he's preparing uh, the fan base to get used to losing because we've kind of been in a fairy tale for 11 years, winning all the games they've had, all the four Western Conference Finals appearances. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought he avoided the R word, the rebuild word. Mm -hmm. He used reposition, replenish, <laughs> but um, it's obvious they're going to start losing before they start winning again. Mark, what do you think? Well, I, I think Carson's suit game is about as good as Preston. Yeah, yeah really. He's really. I don't have the spectacles, though. He's got though. the same tailor, apparently. <laughs> it's been a, it's going to be a crazy three days. We're going to hear from Russell Westbrook today in Houston, and I think that's, uh, to me, pretty interesting what he's going to have to say about his time here in Oklahoma yeah. City. Uh, but I, I, same as Carson, I, what I expected. And, uh, you know, the team might be okay next season. It might not be terrible, but he'll have a decision at some point next season is do I want to trade pieces or do we want to act like we're going to be semi-competitive for a playoff? Uh, and I, I think this season really, to me, I hear from a lot of people, they're excited about kind of a new beginning. Uh, it won't be the same as what it yeah. was, but there was some frustration at the end of last year with the way the team played. Alex, do you think that, and were you surprised that he said, hey, no, uh, we didn't want to trade Paul George. Are you surprised that he was that candid about that? I mean, I don't think anybody uh, didn't think that, but are you surprised that he kind of called Paul George out? Uh, no, I mean, if you know Presti, he's, he's as, as much of a straight shooter as he mm -hmm. can be. Um, and so he kind of had to answer for um, the mutual uh, comment that Paul George made during his press conference and basically saying that it was not mutual from the beginning. Once Paul George came out with the trade request, it then became mutual. You have to see what you can get for him. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was mutual between the two of them from the beginning. Right. It's like a breakup. Right. Yeah. That's what I said. Some people <laughs> say it's mutual and other yeah, no, people say, no, no it, yeah, it really you, wasn't. Yeah, usually me. one side's ending it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this idea of the team rebuilding this year and not playing as well, is that because that's the talent that will be on the court or because that's a strategy as they get into the deep part of the season? Well, as the roster is currently constructed with Chris Paul and the pieces they have remaining, they're kind of a fringe playoff team. Mm -hmm. I just think we're not done seeing the pieces being moved. He doesn't yeah. give away Jeremy Grant for a first round pick if he's trying to make the playoffs. I think. Guys like Dennis Schroeder could be traded. Andre Robertson could be dumped for salary. I just think, as the roster is currently constructed, they don't they could contend for a playoff spot. I just don't think that suits them. That doesn't behoove them to win games right now. They want to get as high a draft picks as they possibly can, so they can draft the next Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden. The odds of that aren't likely, but that's kind of the plan moving forward. So I think, as the roster is now, they can win, but I don't think Sam's done. I think that's why he was hesitant to use the word rebuild right now because he hasn't moved. Look, Chris Paul and him, they're playing a leverage game. They're mm -hmm. both going to pretend they're happy with one another until the right trade comes along. Then he will trade him and dip down and start playing the young guys, which I, I agree with Mark. I think it's, it's a different kind of excitement, right? Mm -hmm. It's not contending for a championship, but it's a young, hungry team, kind of like we saw when they first got to Oklahoma City. I think some of the most fun Thunder fans have had in the arena was when they were the eight seed, taking mm -hmm. on the big bad mm -hmm. Lakers when they were kind of the young up-and-comers. So I think that's what's coming. Are you surprised and were you surprised when the Paul George trade came down were you like everybody else, fans caught off guard? Oh, yeah, it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it came in the middle of the night, right, too. Right, in the middle of the <laughs> you night, know, it really did. Most of Oklahoma woke up and found out that Paul George was traded. Yeah. So, yeah, it was not expected at all. If Paul George was still here, would Russell Westbrook would still be here? Was this a domino thing? Is that an obvious? Yeah, he would still be here. Um, and Carson and I were having this conversation before the show. As I, I think that this team, I think, might have been a six, seven seed. And that's not really a great place to be if the Thunder would have finished the top 20 in the NBA. They would have lost their first round pick this season. So what Sam Presti's done, I think, is pretty exciting to him because I think he does like to tinker and move. And, and that's what he's best at in his job is the, is the trade maneuvering. So he's got all these picks, may trade some of them, may take some of them. But it does set Oklahoma City as a small market team 
up to be pretty good for the next mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. Yeah, I, I think Paul and Russ and Sam, they fought the good fight, but mm -hmm. deep down, I think they all kind of knew that they had maxed out their potential. Their, their, the, their salary cap was maxed out. Yeah. They knew they weren't going to win a title. So I think that's why Paul, once this opportunity with Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers came about, that's why he made the move. And I think that's why Russell and Sam were eventually cool with it. I think mm. they all deep down knew that they were not winning a title this season. What does Billy Donovan have to do to have an extension? Um, I mean, I don't know. That's a, that's a delicate situation. Sam kind of skirted the issue there about how well he got along with Russ and, and Paul George. I think this is a great opportunity for Billy Donovan. The pressure is completely off. He's going to be coaching young college-type athletes, which he was a great – he's a legendary college coach. I mean, he'll be in the Basketball Hall of Fame as a college coach. So, it's a, for me, it's, a, it's an opportunity for him to prove that he can develop young players, which I thought he did a pretty good job of. Jeremy Grant jumped leaps and bounds under Billy Donovan. So, I, to me, I think the pressure's off for Billy Donovan, but he is on a one-year contract. He is coaching for his job. So, the pressure's off, but – he still has to prove he can coach another year. Well, one thing, Alex, he's gone from having a coachable or an uncoachable team to now a very coachable team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was nothing he could do to coach Russell Westbrook. Russell was going to do what he wanted to do, ball dominant player. And now I think we can start to see Billy Donovan, some of his workings mm -hmm. with the team. And, and I think that'll be noticeable. If he wants to come back, I think he will be able to come back. If he doesn't, he'll go get a great job in college and make the same kind of money. So he's going to be fine. And I think if you look at the assistant coaches that the team got, um, it's, it's more on the developmental side than it is on the contending winning side uh, and so they brought up two coaches from the blue um, they they pretty much stayed in-house internal hires for the for the assistant coaches and that signals a team that is more development directional versus contending directional and I, I think that's telling too to his point that they had three assistant coaches leave before this season mm -hmm. that says they weren't too comfortable with Billy Donovan's contract situation either they, right. they chose more stability right. elsewhere even a guy like Mark Bryant who was their big man coach had been here since day one. A guy like that leaving tells you that he didn't think Billy Don was on firm footing, so we could find something out at the end of this season. Who are some of the young players that you're excited about that are coming to the oh, Oklahoma City Thunder? Shea Gilgis Alexander yeah. Is, yeah. is, I think he's going to be a good one. Um, and it, it's, it'll be good to see the development of Hamadou Diallo. Yes. Um, Terrence Ferguson maybe making a leap. It, the dynamic of the team changed completely. So you have guys that were more spot up, spot up shooters. Uh, now Terrence Ferguson has the freedom to to freelance out there. You know, now Hamadou Diallo has the freedom to freelance and let his athletic ability shine. So 